This is Breaking News from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Sponsored by Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino and Spa. Individual interviews uh, that night, uh, just the appreciation for uh, the people in the organization that uh, do such a great job. We were able to have uh, our pro scouting staff in, our amateur scouting staff in, our development people in with their uh, with their wives to be able to uh, enjoy the game. Um, you know, our hockey operations uh, people, our business side, the work uh, that they do. Uh, obviously, uh, Bill and Carol Foley and uh, the support and resources they've given us to build a team. Uh, you know, my relationship with George and uh, my happiness uh, for him. And uh, it's been uh, it's been amazing. I, I have said to different people uh, as you respond to messages, uh, you think you have an idea what it might feel like uh, when it happens, and you find out you had no idea uh, what it's going to feel like. It's just uh, you know overwhelming. It's surreal, and it's uh, you know really uh, gratifying when it uh, when it comes together uh, like it did. Tremendously proud of the players, uh, how well they played, the job that uh, Bruce and his staff did uh, as coaches uh, this year. I thought they. Uh, uh, I thought our team could play any way you wanted to play. I really felt that uh, uh, it was uh, uh, it was uh, very well constructed. I thought Bruce uh, had our team play to an identity that we envisioned uh, it could and would. And I said uh, again the other night doing interviews, you have to have some things go your way. We had good health in the playoffs and uh, ironic in a sense because we've had uh, poor health all through the regular season. Uh, the year previous was uh, a real challenge to keep our team uh, healthy and when it mattered the most at playoff time we were healthy throughout I believe. Uh, you know, Braden McNabb, Shea Theodore each missed the elimination game against Winnipeg. Uh, Braden Ball and Ben Hutton came in and performed admirably. Petro missed a game uh, in the Edmonton series with a suspension and uh, past that uh, pretty much healthy except for, as was the story of the year, the story of the second half, not the first half, the goaltenders where Laurent Bressois, uh, you know, beat his old team, beat his old uh, goalie partner Connor Hellebuck out in the first round of the playoffs, played tremendous, and in game three in Edmonton uh, was injured where, you know, Aiden had to come in and, uh, and play after, uh, you know, a couple of months out of the lineup and uh, just played unbelievable for us uh, as, uh, as you all know. So uh, the focus now uh, is the, the, the draft which is, uh, is right, uh, right ahead of us here. Our amateur staff uh, remained in town. They'll do their final year-end meetings uh, this week and through, uh, through next week. Uh, free agency on uh, uh, July 1st so that uh, uh, falls to the responsibilities uh, of our pro staff. Uh, we've got our own uh, free agents that we uh, will work towards here uh, over the next little while to sort out where we're at with uh, with those situations. And uh, you don't have uh, a long time uh, to enjoy it in the short term. Uh, in the long term, it's uh, it's something that'll stay uh, with all of us uh, forever. And then just uh, my final thoughts is uh, is uh, is what it looked like with uh, fan support. Uh, that we had uh, inside and outside uh, the building. It, uh, uh, you know, when you when you stood on the ice, uh, you know, it's interesting when you stand on the ice. The things you notice. The thing for me that just kept resonating was the the pure joy uh, that you saw in uh, in people's faces. And then the other thing that that kind of stuck out to me is how long the fans all stayed in the building. It was. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I thought a significant amount of time after the game had ended, you look around and the building's still full, which uh, uh, is tremendous when you can uh, when you can win on home ice. That hasn't happened as often as uh, you might expect. There's been some situations where teams had that chance and couldn't close, then won, uh, won it on the road. So uh, for us, we, uh, we missed the chance to uh, win the Dallas series uh, on home ice, and uh, it was one of the things that I said uh, I said at the end of that series, I felt better prepared for the Stanley Cup final because our series with Dallas had gone six games than if it had gone four games. And the reason that I said that is, you know, when you miss getting it done in the fourth game and you think, well, we'll finish it at home in the fifth game and that doesn't happen, that puts a lot of pressure uh, on a team. And that's where, you know, we came up with probably for me our best game of the playoffs to eliminate Dallas uh, in game six. 
and knowing that you have that in you, that's what playoffs force you to do. They force you to uh, to find it like you maybe never dreamt you could. You overcome doubts because there's going to be doubts over the course of a playoff run. And I thought that win uh, just really served us well. And then I think as well, uh, we weren't going to miss a second opportunity in Game 5 uh, on home ice to end the series. And, of course, this one was for uh, the Stanley Cup. So happy for our fans that we were able to do it uh, uh, at home, and uh, like everyone, uh, really looking forward to uh, the parade tomorrow. These are things that you that you dream about, and it should be uh, a great day for the organization, a great day for uh, our city, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be really special. So, uh, with that, I'll open it up to uh, any questions that the people have. Uh, Alan Snow with LVSportsBiz.com. Kelly, can you want to elaborate on the whole theme of having a very balanced lineup and also playing any kind of style to win and and the way you built the roster to support those themes? Yeah, I think the, the strength of our team, you know, we've talked about the construction of a team many times and our vision is to how it needs to look, the, the, the key people you have to have and the key positions, and we had those. I think past that, uh, our depth was tremendous. And, uh, you know, you look at the ice time uh, through four lines, you look at the ice time through a group of six defensemen, um, you know, you can see the importance that every player had. And the thing that's interesting is a lot of times when that team wins the Stanley Cup and they cross the finish line, uh, they pretty much collapse. And our guys were, uh, you know, saying in jest, like, let's go again. Uh, who, who's, uh, who's coming next? Like, it was a, uh, a really a team effort. Um, you know, I talked about the identity. Uh, our team was big. It was strong. It uh, certainly could play uh, the hockey that you need to play at this time of year. But I think as well, great speed when you look at our centers. Um, you know, we could really push people back. Um, you know, real good performances from complimentary players. When you look at, uh, you know, the Amadios, the Howdens, you know, some of those guys, the identity that that Nick Wall line had. Um, you know, the the development and emergence of Nick Haig and Zach Whitecloud, how important they were uh, as uh, as playoffs went on. And one of the things that, uh, in my experience, I've always really valued uh, uh, playoffs for is they make your players better. And, uh, you know, some of these guys I'm mentioning, when we come back in the fall, they're better players. They're better players. Jack Eichel is a better player uh, on September 1st than, uh, than he was on uh, April 1st. And that's, uh, that's what uh, I think helps teams, uh, you know, continue to win or, or maybe, uh, you know, have that uh, ability to, uh, to, you know, rise to the occasion uh, in key situations. Hey Kelly, Derek Van Dees, Senate Shillacom. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to congratulate you on, on the win the other night. Thanks, so Derek. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask you, 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 you look at this team, and, and when you started, you started with a blank page. And then I guess I want to ask you about the vision of, of getting from there to here, and I guess just, just the journey along the way. And you get a chance to take a little reflect back and say, well, a lot of things we did obviously worked out. <clears throat> I, I haven't done that as much as I will probably, Derek, but... Uh, you know, I would say this to you, and I, a lot of these things for the people that are uh, here all the time, they've heard me say before, um, this is our sixth year, organizationally it's our seventh year. And that first year, what uh, you know, I call, you know, the, I, I, I define it, that was the expansion year, our first season was the inaugural season, that's sort of how I delineate the two experiences, and the expansion process, um, you know, and, and it's interesting. We had 11 months. Uh, the team was awarded before the NHL draft in 2016. I believe George McPhee was hired, you know, mid-July. Uh, I came on board August 1st. We did the expansion uh, the following June. So in that period of time, we hired, you know, close to 50 people in scouting, hockey operations. Um, you know, part of the uh, reward for George, for myself, for so many of the day one people is we had the ability to have our hands on every single thing we've done. And the one, the one thing that we were always really proud of and remain proud of is we put together a tremendous staff. We didn't inherit anybody, we didn't have uh, you know, another manager's people or another regime we were trying to integrate with some people we brought in. 
Everyone we brought in, we tried to find the best human talent that we could. We wanted low ego, hard working, and, uh, and that's exactly what we got. So they laid the groundwork for the expansion itself, for what uh, came in year one, and then every year since. So that's, uh, you know, that's kind of one of the things uh, that I think about. And you know, it's the quality of that staff for me that, uh, that carries a lot of the decisions that we make. And, and you make, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of decisions that you make as a manager. And, and for me, it's never about you know, one tremendous decision. It's about a series of good decisions. To me, that's leadership. And if you're running a hockey team or you're running a business, you need to make a series of good decisions. You need to marshal your resources to use the people around you uh, to arrive at those decisions. And then uh, you need the conviction to, uh, to believe in them. And I think that we've done that uh, really consistently throughout, and that's uh, I think a large uh, part of the reason why we sit here today. Hi Kelly, uh, Dan Kingersky, Vegas Hockey Now. I think you touched on it a little bit. Uh, maybe you had lightning in a bottle in the very I inaugural season. Do you think this team is more sustainable and, and built to last? Yeah, that's that's our goal, Dan, is uh, to build a team that can uh, be a you know, a contending team on a sustainable basis, on a continual basis, and uh, you know, again, I, I, I always qualify it by saying I'm not trying to diminish anything that happened in year one. It'll be unparalleled, unmatched, and uh, uh, you know, as special a season as an organization could ever have. <clears throat> but you know, objectively, when you when you take a step back and you look at where you want to try to go, uh, you know, winning was a real priority for us after we had that year one success. If we wanted to be, uh, you know, a contending team uh, on a consistent basis, we needed to improve the personnel. Uh, we've done that every year. I think that that uh, you know each each of the years that we went to the conference finals against Dallas, against Montreal. I think that you know those were teams that. Uh, you know that could have advanced. You know we uh, we didn't, but I think that those were good teams. You know, interestingly, I, I say last year uh, was probably the best team we had, and and we uh, we didn't make the playoffs. So that's uh, that can happen. Um, you know, one of the things I, I feel about this team, we're going to be able to keep the core of our of our Stanley Cup championship team together better than. A lot of the previous winners were, um, you know, pretty good in terms of uh, players locked up for next season. Uh, I think we'll, you know, we'll have work to do. We'll have some things that we need to manage, but I think that we're going to have, uh, you know, a real significant core of this uh, of this team return. And you know, as I mentioned earlier. You, you hope that this experience uh, makes you a better team. We've got a, you know, a dressing room full of Stanley Cup champions now. So uh, you hope that that assists you as you move uh, move ahead. But that's clearly what we're uh, what we're trying to do. I think that you know there's this uh, notion from some people that we were all in. That it's uh, you know if we didn't win it this year, it was this year or bust. And I think that uh, couldn't be further from the truth. We go to uh, the NHL draft as the Stanley Cup champion with the first round pick. Uh, so you know you go backwards and look at uh, how many times that's happened. It doesn't happen very often. We've got five picks in this draft. We've never had less than six picks uh, in a draft. So uh, it, it's there, there's there's no question that we want to win, we're trying to win. I made the comment as well the other night, this isn't uh, Bill coming down on us and say we better get going here or else. This is George McPhee and Kelly McCrimmon that want to win. This is our players really appreciating that we're trying to win. We're not rebuilding, we're not retooling, we're not trying to catch the final playoff spot and maybe win a round. We're trying to win. We're trying to win and I think that that there's you know there's a big distinction there and, and that's uh, uh, that's what our objective is, but it's not uh, it's not oblivious to uh, prospects in our system. Our amateur staff have drafted really well. Some of those players have have helped us acquire other players. You know, we made a, a really uh, important trade for Ivan Barbashev this year. We traded a good young player in Zach Dean that our amateur staff had drafted. So uh, this ties together, and uh, um, you know we, we we continue to try to. Uh, be in a position where we can have good teams. Kelly, Mike Zeiss for NHL.com. Uh, just wondering to your point, um, you know, 
how do you view the free agents that you do have to deal with, uh, and in, in particular Aiden Hill, because you do, you know, he contributed so much, but you do have a cachet of goalies. And just as an aside and, and a more sobering thought, just I know how much a proud prairie and you are and, and your roots in Manitoba just a word to the people there after the uh, horrible bus accident there uh, yesterday well heartbreaking Mike and uh, uh, you know just parallel so much in my mind uh, with the humble tragedy uh, and uh, you know I, I know exactly where it happened I've driven the highway uh, a thousand times uh, broad daylight uh, it's it's almost unthinkable that it would happen where you know on the prairies it might be in a storm or whatever that wasn't the case as uh, was the case with the tragedy uh, in Humboldt and uh, heartbreak and my heart goes uh, out to them I read uh, the Brandon Sun this morning the Winnipeg Free Press this morning just to hear as much as I or to read as much about it as I could but it's uh, it's uh, it's heartbreaking uh, for sure um, <clears throat> The rest of your question with respect to the free agents, uh, Mike, um, we've got some players on expiring contracts. Uh, you mentioned Aiden, you know, Barbashev. We've got, uh, uh, you know, we've got Phil. We've got uh, Jonathan Quick. We've got Teddy Bluger. You know, that's that's business that uh, that we'll take care of in the next couple of weeks. Every team goes through that. The thing that's uh, makes it a little different for us is the success we had and the contributions that uh, those people made, and the fact that it's uh, June fifteenth. But we'll. Um, you know, we, we don't. Uh, mentioned it earlier, we, we don't get to, to sit on this for long. We've got uh, we've got work to do and things to prepare for. Kelly Willie Ramirez with the Associated Press. I asked Bruce this, considering his career has taken him to three traditional, long-standing pro sports cities: Chicago, Washington, Boston. And you've made your way through the. You know, you've seen plenty of hockey cities, but you've been here since the beginning, and you're somewhat the architect. Of, of, of the Golden Knights bringing the first Stanley Cup in just six years. I'd like your thoughts maybe on the evolution of Vegas in still probably its infancy stages becoming a pro sports town, but two teams have been to four championships, two teams now have two titles, and just how great it is to sort of be here at the beginning of Vegas's pro sports town you know, life. It's interesting, Willie, because uh, in a sense, uh, you know, pro sports are now part of the identity of our uh, of our city, and um, you know, you, you look at those things that no one can ever take away from you. We'll always have uh, the pride that comes with being the first one, the pride that comes with uh, being Vegas born. Um, you know, the unfortunate tragedy that kind of you know galvanized the people to the to the players uh, and vice versa. I think some of those things uh, will never change. Um, you know, I, I mentioned in my opening comments the people outside the building uh, on uh, on Tuesday was uh, uh, was incredible. I expect uh, we'll be overwhelmed tomorrow when we uh, when we see the uh, the support that will be there uh, for the parade. And you know, that's uh, you know George talks about it all the time. Bill talks about it all the time. We want to be. Uh, part of the community, we want our players to be part of the community, and uh, you know, hockey players uh, are good guys. Uh, I, I think uh, we are really proud of that in our sport, and then I think within our own team, our leadership and our character is tremendous. And uh, not to, to deviate from your question, but there's times in a playoff run where uh, you're really challenged to find that. And I felt uh, in the Edmonton series, which was, you know, tremendously competitive, uh, our character and our leadership really, uh, really helped us as that series went on. And I think, in my opinion, at least, it, it got us through that series. So, you know, we've got, uh, you know, really good people. A lot of these guys that we call great character players uh, on a hockey team are really good people as husbands, fathers, and, and, uh, and people in a community as well. Then goes Las Vegas Street Journal. Kelly, you mentioned you know goaltending injuries were kind of the story of the second half. Is there any update on Logan Thompson? How can you be wearing a University of Minnesota shirt at a Vegas Golden Knights press conference? They got up for the home state. God, man. Okay, sorry, your question. I, I honestly, I was looking right at it. And I didn't even hear you. That's all good. I know you have a different M. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, you mentioned goaltending injuries being kind of the story of the second half. Is there any update on Logan Thompson, Laurent Brassois, and Robin Leonard? Yeah, all uh, uh, they all improved, and, and uh, you know the goaltending was 
you know, unprecedented and it was interesting because we had no injuries uh, with goaltending until uh, the All-Star break and then it was a challenge to you know make sure we had two to play. That's why we added Jonathan Quick who ended up you know playing in 11 games for us. Um, Logan and LB, uh, Laurent, uh, I think have rehabbed uh, real well. I think they were at a point where um, you know they were they would have been options. Uh, you know, would have been you know cutting it pretty fine, but they were they were certainly trending. Uh, Lenny, who I texted back and forth with uh, after uh, the game the other night, uh, he's had major surgeries. He's had uh, three of them. Um, you know, those will be conversations that our medical team has with uh, with Robin as we uh, move forward and assess kind of where uh, where he's at. We'll know more about that here with the benefit of a little bit of time. Hey, Kelly, Steve Carp with the Sporting Tribute. <clears throat> Two things. One, I want to ask you a follow up on Leonard, but first, you were talking about. Staff that have been with you since day, you know since the beginning, and as you enter free agency, I'm thinking about Andrew Lugner and Tom Paraska, two of your guys who manage your cap for you. How important is their role in this process in the next few weeks as you try to deal with 14 UFAs and RFAs in the organization? And two, have you had a conversation with Robin about? His status for next year, is it possible he retires from hockey because of these injuries if he's not able to go? And if so, how would that impact your looking at re-signing a guy like Aiden Hill? A lot to unpack there. Yeah, I think with uh, respect to Lenny, um, our conversation was about the accomplishment uh, the other night. I sure think it's premature to... uh, uh, to suggest what uh, what you're saying uh, there, Steve, and again, uh, to say much more on that, I, I don't have that information uh, for you. Um, you know, you say 14 RFAs. I'm assuming you're including uh, Henderson uh, in that equation. You know, when you look at last year, um, you know our RFAs last year: Nick Waugh, Nick Haig, Zach Whitecloud, Brett Howden. Keegan Colasar, Logan Thompson, Paul Cotter, uh, we're all RFAs uh, off of our off of our NHL team. Our only RFA this year is Brett Howden. So I think we're in a decent spot there. The UFAs I mentioned uh, those guys by name uh, earlier. Um, you know, th- th- those RFAs. You know that we. Uh, you know, every one of those players deserved uh, more money. They they had improved. They developed. And that you know was why some of the decisions we made uh, were made was to keep those players in our lineup. And, and as I read the names off, uh, you know those guys are a big part of the reason why uh, we won a Stanley Cup. So in a cap world, those are really really valuable players. I think when you look around the NHL, sometimes those are roles that teams are signing UFAs to try to fill on. Uh, you know, contracts that fit into a salary cap structure. You know, I call these guys in our organization homegrown because they were all acquired as young players and have developed uh, in our organization. So, Brett Howden would be uh, the only player uh, off the, the big team that's uh, that's in that uh, position again. So, I feel um, you know, there's 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 always work to do. There's always hard decisions to make. Um, you know. You know, players players uh, you know need to be recognized and rewarded when their careers continue to progress, right? And uh, that's uh, you know that's true across uh, the National Hockey League, and um, we'll uh, we'll work our way through that. I, I feel we're in a decent spot, Steve. So how about Tom and oh, and sorry, Andrew sorry, sorry about their it, their role in all of this? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say it to you a different way. Um, we don't make a decision in hockey operations without their input, ever. So that speaks to, I guess, the regard we have for their work and the importance of that position in an NHL organization. And you know, I've sat uh, here before where um, you know there was uh, criticism or questions of me about our salary cap management. 
And uh, I think our guys do an absolute fantastic job of managing the salary cap. It's part of why we're sitting here today. We don't have any dead money on our books. We don't buy anybody out. We don't attach assets to, to make trades. Uh, it, we don't have, I think, even uh, a publication as uh, prolific as The Athletic said that we don't have a bad contract on our team. So that's a credit to uh, those people. That's that's their input, and yeah, they're they're extremely important. Yeah, because they, they kind of they fly under the radar. You and George are always you know getting the the bulk of uh, the exposure, but you know these guys since the four year one were involved. Well, they've both been since year one. They're uh, they, they're, uh, they're 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 among that early group of people. Yeah. Uh, that we've hired, yeah. Thanks. Vince Sapienza, Fox 5, you touched on the pride you have in your staff and what they've done since year one. I'm just curious, can you take us kind of behind the curtain, those moments with you and George as the clock's ticking down, and then have you had a moment just you two to kind of reflect a little bit, yeah. being hunkered down that expansion year to now? Not, not, not a lot, uh, Vince. I think... Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, uh, just just as an observer on the ice, the the joy you saw in people. Um, you know, all of our scouts were on the ice. Uh, the, the guys that Steve just uh, mentioned, George. You know, and and in the case of George and I, um, you know, we're always uh, together. We're always talking. So, uh, yeah, we both uh, knew what was at stake. Um, you know, I don't think until Mark Stone scored the eighth goal that George thought we might win the Stanley Cup. Uh, but uh, no, it, it's uh, it's a little bit surreal, right? That's uh, that's how it is. And uh, you wake up that next morning, and and it kind of takes you a minute to sort of get your bearings. And uh, it's it's a good feeling. Um, you know, we had a you know a good visit, kind of a bunch of us uh, in hockey ops yesterday, where we just. Uh, you know, sat around and talked about the night that was, and and uh, you know how much fun. Uh, you know, and, and again, there's you talk about behind the curtain. I mean, you know, everything we did that night was completely choreographed. We had a place to go after the game. We had a place to go after we went to the place after the game. It was it was just all laid out so that that all you all you had to do was enjoy it. And they, you know, they do these things uh, behind our back because they know if we knew what was going on, we'd be furious, right? <laughs> and yet, and yet, you know, the NHL, uh, you know, they insist they need a list of 18 people that get to go on the ice first, right? So, you know, they have to bring some of this stuff to you because they have to have it. It's, uh, it's, uh, part of how, uh, it works. But yeah, as a, as a pure hockey guy, um, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 honestly, it was kind of an hour after the game <clears throat> that the thought crossed my mind: we won nine three. Like, like it just, it just even, you know, I kind of lost sight of it because obviously, what was important was the win, right? Well, yeah, the guys, uh, the guys played great. I thought in the second period when the Florida player broke his stick, that was the, that was the game. That was the game. It uh, never, ever, uh, uh, never, ever was back in their hands. And you know, to the question that's asked or the comment that's made by Mike earlier, Aiden made some good saves early in that game. You never think in a nine-three game, boy, the goalie was good, right? But he he made some good saves. And then, of course, you know, we get a little bit sloppier in the third period, which you know is uh, is human nature. But uh, yeah, happy, uh, uh, you know, happy for all of those guys that like. You work hard in this business. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about uh, these people that I've referred to. And when you look at, uh, you know, amateur scouts and uh, and their roles, there's uh, there's not a, a less sexy job in hockey. Those guys are on the road every day. They're in rinks all across the the world. Uh, is uh, where those guys go to do uh, the work. The pro staff guys are on the road all the time uh, as well. So. Um, you know, we had a call this morning with our pro staff just to do a little bit of a reset, and you know, I made sure I uh, thanked them, recognized them, again, happy for them, and uh, and yet, uh, you know, turning the page to get ready for uh, for what we have ahead. Danny Webster, Las Vegas Sun, Kelly. When we when we talked on Tuesday after I'd asked you if you had a chance to reflect a little bit on the journey you had, and you. As you mentioned in the opening comment, you deflected it to everyone else and the credit for them. 
now that you've had a few days to reflect on since you took the job in 2019, have you had a chance to kind of sit down and just examine just the moves you made along the way, the decisions you had to make to get to this point? Well, that we always do, uh, Dan. You know, I think you always have to, you know, debrief and, and review what you've done, why you did it, and uh, how you feel about it afterwards. I think that's how you uh, you learn and grow. Um, you know, in a word, I would say, you know, if I was to reflect, I would say in a word, grateful. Um, you know, a great opportunity that I had uh, to come and work uh, in this organization. Uh, tremendously grateful that George McPhee saw fit to promote me to general manager uh, in 2019 when he's such a good general manager himself. Um, so grateful for that. Uh, yeah, I, I you know you, you get so many messages in these situations, right? So you know I've got you know so many uh, text messages from. Um, you know, former players, uh, guys that played for me in Brandon, guys that played for us uh, here, uh, people from uh, the Western Hockey League, general managers from the National Hockey League, uh, all kinds of different people from the National Hockey League that uh, reach out to congratulate you. And, you know, if you work in the game, uh, you recognize it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. So uh, I'm really appreciative of how happy uh, a lot of people have been uh, for me. Uh, I mentioned it on the ice uh, the other night. I'm really uh, appreciative and grateful that my family uh, could be here. My daughter, my son, uh, there are significant others, my wife. Um, you know, Brad's son uh, was here, which is, uh, was really neat. Um, you know, one of my longest uh, friends from University of Michigan uh, was here, which, uh, you know, flew in for the game and, uh, uh, you know, we got to do a couple of dinners and stuff. So, you know, that was uh, <coughs> really, uh, really meaningful too, right? So, um, you know, it's unfortunate when you're, when you're doing this, you don't probably appreciate some of those things like you should because you're so focused on trying to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. And yet, uh, you know, there'll be... There'll be time this summer, you know, having a beer and a cigar on the deck where you, you know, you just feel good about, you know, kind of how it happened when you get your day with the cup. Uh, you know, that'll be uh, important, you know. Uh, you know, those types of things. Seeing my parents, you know, look forward to that. Take one final one, Chris. Chris Chapman, Fox Sports Las Vegas. Kelly, Ivan Barbashev probably wasn't the biggest name to be traded at the deadline, but it turns out it was probably the biggest move to be made at the deadline. His play, did it somewhat maybe even exceed your expectations of him? Because I know you'd said when you acquired him, you identified very early that he was a player you targeted. So did he somewhat exceed your expectations? And how imperative is it to bring him back and get him resigned? Well, he was uh, pretty much exactly what we expected, uh, to be completely honest. I think I said when we made the trade, how many times our uh, scouts had in-person viewings of him. Uh, you know, at the time, we felt it was a trade you know, along the lines of some of the moves that Tampa have made at the deadline, where you, um, you know, your, you know, your core is in place, your, your uh, key positions are filled, you, you identify a weakness, you identify a guy that could help that. Um, you know, where he was going to fit, you know, that he would play with Jack Eichel and they'd develop such chemistry. Uh, you, you can't, you can't predict all of that. Uh, and yet, one of the things that was an asset for Ivan in terms of our interest in him was his versatility. We felt that he would fit somewhere. We were so comfortable he could, you know, it might have been you know right wing with William Carlson. It might have been left wing with Chandler Stephen. We didn't know for sure, but we felt that he uh, was going to fill a real key role for us, and he did. He, he did. He was on the interior of the ice. You know, one of the things that was different this year, you know, every playoff we've been in, there's a point where we weren't scoring enough, and we, we that was never talked about this playoff playoff because we were able to continue to to generate offense, and you know, I, I credit Bruce for some of that. I credit the I credit the changes to our roster uh, for some of that. I credit a guy like Ivan Barbashev, but you know, Brett Howden, who I touched on earlier, being a complimentary piece, he was a guy that got to the interior. Michael Amadio uh, got to the interior, and that's you know when you when you go. 
in the playoffs and you look at uh, you know when we played Montreal those top 4D how big and strong those guys were how hard it was to get to the inside Dallas uh, uh, the year previous same same type of thing really hard uh, to get to the inside you need to pay a price uh, to get there and then you know to, to tie it back to the depth guys took turns seizing the moment it, it was uh, there, there was never you know when we went to the rink you know boy if Jack Eichel's line doesn't play good tonight we're going to be in tough. We're not going to be able to get it done. Well, maybe Chandler Stevenson's line carried the mail that night, which you saw in the final series. I thought Chandler's line was uh, was unbelievable. So, you know, I think the combination of, of uh, you know some changes to personnel, some tweaks in terms of how we play, but then the depth, I think, is what uh, allowed us to generate more offense this year than we have in the past. And just how imperative is it to get your time? Well, he's one of the UFAs that we talked about, and uh, you know his value is uh, is obvious. There's uh, the old process we'll go through and see what that see what that looks like. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Steve, did you get your Wi-Fi fixed? You've been watching breaking news from the Las Vegas Review Journal, sponsored by Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa.